joining us now in the studio is Martin Krauss, who's been a physiotherapist with many elite sportsmen around the world in various different sports for some time. He comes in. Thanks very much, Martin, uh, for coming in. To all of us here, this is a day of awakening. We couldn't believe that, that this was going on to such, uh, to such a level. You don't seem too surprised. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to believe that all sports are clean. It's nice to look at a, a game and enjoy the game for what it is and think that people are performing at their natural ability based on you know, hard work and training. But occasionally you see athletes that seem to perform just that little bit more. And you hope that that's because they're having an outstanding day and that they're not taking some form of enhancing medication or drug. And particularly in the area that, of sport that I know of best is cycling. You know, we see some cyc that they're all at such a high standard. And if you suddenly have a cyclist that goes well and truly beyond what anybody else can do, it's not natural. We've seen a few of them recently. Indeed, yeah. Well, tell us about peptides. That's what we've been talking about today. That's uh, what's alleged has been consumed by perhaps some AFL and uh, NRL players, allegations only at the moment. What's a peptide and why are these players wanting to take it so badly? Well, a peptide is an amino acid, so it's a very, very small chain and it creates a protein through growth hormone. And so basically our muscles are 90% protein and so the greater you can build your muscles, the stronger they get. The bigger the volume of muscle, the more power it can produce. But also there are certain types of peptides that stop us from ageing and so they actually stop the degradation of proteins. So normally when we exercise, there's some damage to protein, these proteins are de degraded, and sometimes they're not replaced, but there are even drugs that stop that from happening. So you can keep on building and building, enhancing your muscles over decades, which is not natural either, because after the third or fourth decade of our lives, there's a natural tendency for protein to, to reduce. Yeah, I'm into that fourth decade. <laughs> um, can you understand, um, now there are two different types of, of peptides, yes, there are the illegal and there are some that are perfectly okay to take. Can you understand how a player uh, or even a sports scientist at a club might be led to believe that these are the good batch? Well, exactly. I mean, even your, your whey protein is your protein. It's a peptide type of thing. And I suppose when you're in that sporting environment, you're part of a club, you're part of a team, You've got a confidence in that culture. You've got a confidence in the people there. It's part, they're your friends, it's part of your life. And you've, there's a trust. And this trust then, through manipulation, maybe someone's naivety, it gets, gets broken. And like I like to think in many cases, you know, in some cases, the individual athlete that really tries to pursue a method of cheating, but also I think in some cases, some of these people uh, you know, encouraged to go down a path where they don't really know that it's actually illegal or it's cheating. They just think it's just another method of becoming better and stronger and winning the game. I think you're spot on, Martin. That's uh, been a theme that we've heard in the last couple of days of players saying they thought what they were taking was okay. We've heard a lot about the benefits of peptides, but what type of damage can they do to the human body over time? Well, that's the problem we don't know. Like some of these peptides, as we said before, they're not, not there for human consumption yet. They haven't really been tested on humans and they might work well in, in animal models, but we really don't know what they, what they do to humans. And then the classic, you know, the, the old growth hormone, the anabolic steroid, you know, it took us a while to realise that anabolic steroids can make women look like men, men look like women. And so the question is, what do the peptides do to people? At this point in time, we probably don't really know. A lot of them are gen genetic modifications. And you know, a lot of them have been produced by the pharmaceutical industry for medical purposes, you know, for treatment of various dystrophies in, where muscles are atrophy and you know, they're actually produced for a purpose. In these cases, they probably are beneficial, but like most drugs, there are some side effects. Yeah, this peptide 6 we're hearing about uh, on the bottle, uh, it says for research purposes only. So clearly it, it's not ready for, for human consumption. The beauty of these, these drugs, these peptides or hormones, whatever you call them, for a player is, I guess, that they're very hard to detect. Um, they metabolise very, very quickly. Yeah. 
but also that they can help get over an injury very quickly. Ex ex exactly, and that's the, and that, that new generation of peptide which really helps the protein turnover, helps the person recover more quickly because, you know, in reality, a muscle injury can take up to 28 days to recover, and that's a minor muscle injury. That's just the, you know, the, the delayed onset muscle soreness that we get if we've do, done something new, some unaccustomed custom exercise. We've got really sore muscles 72 hours later. In fact, that takes 28 days to recover from. Mm -hmm. And so you've, in these elite athletes, they don't have 28 days to recover. Huh. And so they, yeah, any means that that's possible to recover quickly, get back on the pitch. And there's a lot expected of them. And, um, but what surprised me actually is that, that it's actually happened here in Australia because in Europe, the money involved is much, much, much bigger than here in Australia. But that was before I knew about you know, organised crime and things like that. But I think uh, there's yeah. certain... Well, one of, the, one of the big issues that's come out in the last couple of the days uh, from some of the people that Chris and I have spoken to are that doctors are unregulated in terms of what they can prescribe for non-therapeutic relief, um, relief. So there's a lot of guys out there that can go and see a doctor and they can be prescribed human growth hormone. They can be mm -hmm. prescribed peptides. Have you seen a, an evolving trend here that the doctors are happy to prescribe these drugs? Yeah, I think in certain areas, for example, in weightlifting and places like that, there are people who happen to be medical practitioners that also weight lift and they're quite happy to do that sort of thing and I personally have friends who are cyclists who are quite happy to try EPO themselves and, and I think that's a bit curious you know in fact I took my wife to a party once in Brussels and she said you know they're all talking about EPO and what type of EPO is to use and I think okay so you know all about this then and, and, and by what you're saying is you have had personal upfront experience with elite athletes taking illegal drugs? Yeah, to a certain extent, like the EPO, that was more that these doctors, these amateur cyclists were using that. Um, we had experiences in the past where things didn't appear to be what they should be. And um, now fortunately at that time, they're the powers to be sort of squashed any sort of investigation into what was going on. And, was that here or, or overseas? That was overseas. Yeah. 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 Well, let's hope it's not here. Well, Martin Krauss, uh, thanks a lot for coming in and uh, being so open about your experiences as a uh, physiotherapist overseas and, of course, here in Australia. My pleasure. Thank Great you. Great stuff, Martin. Thanks very much.